Hello, everybody, and welcome to Silent Podcast, the place to where everything but silent. I'm your host, once again, Isaiah, back with the Big Brother Review Series. This is episode 12 on for Big Brother 12. Um, we're going to review Big Brother 12 this podcast. Very exciting. Um, for a lot of people, uh, this was some people's first season. This is like the middle ground, actually, uh, for a lot of people. So um, this should be a fun one. Uh, we got a whole lot of legends in this season, so it should be great. Um, as usual, I do have a panel. I have back from the, the Bounce Checks Big Brother podcast, Josie. Uh, this is the first time since the first episode she's been back. So jo- Josie, how have you been? I've been good. Um, watching these seasons, first of all, it just reminds me why I loved the Big Brother in the first place. I actually got my mom to watch season 12 and 11 with me when I was back home. So I got her into the Big Brother groove. We bonded. We game talked, you know. So, <laughs> sorry, I just read one of the YouTube comments. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm very happy, excited to talk about it. <laughs> um, and, yes, you guys know me. I love Big Brother, so. I'm down to get down. And also, me and I said, sometimes don't see eye to eye, so we will be speaking on it. I'm dead. All right. <laughs> um, we also have Tito coming back. Yo, Tito, what's going on, man? I'm great. I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here. Um, season 12 was kind of an entry point for me for Big Brother. Mm-hmm. So I like I liked returning to it and kind of remembering, like you said, Josie, like why I love Big Brother. Um, lots of good characters. I think the cast is very hit or miss, but when it hits, mm-hmm. it hits hard. And when it misses, it misses hard. So we'll get into it. Yeah, you know, I agree with you. Um, We said this during Big Brother 14's review, but I kind of feel like the same is here. This season is very top heavy. So like uh, a lot of the players this season who are good, uh, they go pretty far. And then a lot of the bad players go very early. So, you know, it's not really in between. But, you know, there are some memorable and messy moments this season. So I'm I'm excited to talk about all of it. But uh, before we get into any specifics, like usual, we have to talk about the twist of the season, um, you know, just the production side and everything. So this was a pretty interesting twist. I kind of wish they tried it again just with some tweaks. But the big thing this season was the Big Brother Saboteur twist. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was also a Pandora's box, um, which <clears throat> actually had the Diamond Power of Vito. But um, just to break down the Saboteur twist, this is a twist where there's one player in the house actively trying to sabotage the entire game for everyone else. And if they make it to jury phase, they get $50,000 um, where everyone else is trying to figure out who that saboteur is while also playing the game of big brother. Um, and we also have, like I said, the diamond power of veto that was in Pandora's box. Basically you can take a nominee off the block and you, the veto holder gets to name the replacement nominee. So, you know, there's some interesting twists this season, um, but just like, casual big brother uh you know a lot of these twists flop um unfortunately uh i think that there's a lot of twists in big brother history where it's like you know if they were done differently it could be cool i think this is one of them mm. like i also think mm-hmm. of camp comeback um i'm, I'm also going to think of uh the bb app store a little bit you know there's there's there are some cool concepts here and i do think this is one of the better ones um josie how do you feel about the saboteur twist I think the saboteur test is so interesting because we saw that it has implications in the game. Like it could be very impactful. Like the rumor that two house guests are actually lifelong friends, like that stuff causes paranoia and it kind of causes you to reevaluate everything and think, well, is my closest ally even really my closest ally? So it adds another level of like paranoia, sociology, you know, people looking at other people's behaviors etc which i find so intriguing and exciting like that's my favorite part of big brother is that layer of like how people behave how they maneuver and stuff like that and so if we had known who the saboteur was i would have paid extra attention to their gameplay and if it worked it would have been the moment i mean they did bring it back later on in the season but i don't like i think i don't like how it was executed in that way um so yeah i think it had such good potential i'm just curious why they picked annie for that position you know like i'm like why was that there were so many characters this season like matt to me being the saboteur yes it's a little obvious 
but like it makes more sense to me and Matt had the longevity that I think Annie didn't but I I don't know I don't know why they picked her what about you Tito yeah I mean I think I agree with you generally about this twist as a whole I think it has you know it has legs that it could be good um, but I think ultimately it doesn't work in a game like this. I think there's a reason why the mole exists, right? I think that's kind mm. of like more where that is suited in terms of like someone actively trying to ruin others. I think here it was a little bit like like kids play or child's play where like the the things that the sabota- the saboteur was sabotaging were not like super uh, about the game. They were more mm. so relationships within the game or about certain people i kind of wanted there to be like a veto sabotage or like oh. you know something like that that was like had consequences in the game and so just it it didn't make me think that it was like too impactful overall um which we saw right with annie being the first one out but even when it came back it didn't seem like it did too much um for the overall arc of the season like i don't necessarily remember big brother 12 as like the season of the saboteur mm. um so i think that that is something to do with it too Unfortunately, and it should have been the season of the saboteur, but it wasn't. Um, uh, just a comment on one of your comments, uh, Josie, when you were like, "Why did they pick Annie?" Um, so tell me if I'm wrong. I think that she came in with her intro pack, and she was like, "I'm a bisexual woman. I'm gonna play uh, guys and girls. I'm gonna flirt with both sides if I need to." Yes. Um, she's also saying she was friendly. They were probably were like, "Look, we want someone who's gonna like be directly in the middle that everyone's gonna like. She's promoting this flirtatious gameplay or something. I don't know. Like, and I, I mean, honestly." I don't think Annie stands out too much at the beginning. If you look at everyone, they probably wanted someone who's like, all right, this person's probably not going to get targeted early on or something. Um, I mean, obviously a huge miss because Annie was like a character, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. Well, I, I think mean, that's also- a good read, right? I think that Annie mm-hmm. was kind of in that spot where she like didn't, people weren't really looking at mm-hmm. her. She was like kind of making friends. The reason she was targeted was because she was close kind of to Rachel and Brendan at the start Mm -hmm. and so they're like well if we can't get one of them let's get Annie and I don't know I think that she wasn't a bad pick she does you know in history kind of pegged to be like someone to go mid-jury even so like for her to last a few weeks I don't think was um I think that was a good call it just didn't happen to work out this specific season I don't know like I someone put a comment and I want to put it up here like would be an er- another Eric's uh, as America's player. And here's why, mm-hmm. like, to me, I see the vision, but I just don't think it was well executed in the sense that, like, yes, I see. But Eric, to me, is a charming guy. Like, he has charm, and he knows how to navigate stuff. And not to, like, drag Annie or anything. I don't know her personally. I hope drag she's doing her. well. <laughs> but, like, I just don't see that charisma. I don't see that, like, people, like, her drawing people in. There are a lot of people on this cast that I feel draw people in. Brittany is more of a, like, funny character of some sorts. And so maybe her being this... I mean, she filled her own role in that season. (laughs) But she had charisma. People liked Brittany. Like, and we'll see that later on in the season. And same thing with, like, Reagan. Like, obviously, later on, Reagan becomes a saboteur or whatever. But, like... Anyways. But he also has that charisma that, to me, just makes sense for an initial saboteur. Lane, someone who's so like keep and he he kind of talked about it. He was like, I played the dumb card. Like he would have been so unassuming. People would be like, it's not fucking Lane. Be serious. Like, you know what I mean? Like they they wouldn't have assumed that. Obviously, you know, and he brings this like mysterious energy. Same thing with like Matt. So like if I was in the house, those are the two people I think I would look out just on like first glance. You know what I mean? So I don't think. You know, I just don't think it was the right pick. And I don't think it was the right execution. But, you know. Well, was I, I mean, Big Brother naturally doesn't have the right execution. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm also going to look at uh, Big Brother 16, where they gave Joey uh, the first slot in Team America. And then she was first boot as well. Um, and, you know, how that ended out. So it's like, and, and me also, just to come some slack, I mean, the last two seasons coming into this was, I mean, technically last four, you got 11 with that crazy cast that fought every week. You got 10. <laughs> that's, you know interesting in its own you got nine which that was a freaking mess and then you got eight evil dick season so it's like 
you know, they Chaos. probably thought that they found like the X factor and, and you know, they were completely wrong, but um, they're, they're coming off a couple chaotic seasons here. So, you know, uh, what are you going to do? But, but they wanted more chaos. That was the whole point. Yeah, listen. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think they should have waited a little and sussed yeah. people out. That's why I, I think you don't have to activate a test. I think the issue a lot of the times with Big Brother is that they think that the first episode, the first night, two time premiere, whatever, they need to throw all the gimmicks at the wall first night. When the ex like take like we can talk about Taylor's experience. Taylor in the beginning, like, you know what I mean? If I was looking for someone to twist, I could have picked Taylor for like her charisma, or whatever. But we saw her in the trenches in the beginning of the game, you know? So sometimes it's okay to do a twist, you know, a week later. Let people settle in. Maybe pick the person you think would be iconic for it. Like if we would have settled in and uh, not to reference Big Brother Canada, but if we look at the last season and we would have gone a few like weeks of gameplay and then pick the saboteur, I would have picked like Martin because he was a mess, uh, or like Kevin or Helena because they were in really chaos, like really interesting positions, and you couldn't have called that from week one and day one, you know, which I think is the problem. All right. Well, we might as well get into the season because we spoke a lot about Annie, so we, you know, we're not going to spend a <laughs> lot of time on her. Um, but some some notable things that happens actually um, on the week that she is eliminated. Obviously, she's named as the saboteur. Where we're mm -hmm. seeing this cast, in, you know, 4K is being kooky. You got a uh, the lights going off, and for some reason, Brendan got up to go brush his teeth, and everyone thought he was a saboteur. Um, uh, what what else are we are we thinking? Uh, we we see. Uh, Andrew doing his thing, uh, acting crazy. Uh, we're seeing the formation of the brigade very early on with mm -hmm. these four. Um, we're going to see Brittany hurt her ankle during the first challenge and then everyone giving her sympathy. Uh, Brenchel also is birth this week. This is such a crazy <laughs> first week. Um, we're going to see Hayden win HOH. Uh, you know, he nominates Brendan and Rachel. They're both on the block. Brendan wins veto. And then Annie, since she is so close with those two, goes up in their, uh, in their place and is eliminated here. Um, but what's going? What, what did Annie do wrong? For her to go home, Tito. I think that you you just said it. I think it was being too close to Brendan and Rachel. I think that they made themselves targets early on, and so when and Brendan was the the main target. I think Hayden really had it out for Brendan, and so when he had the veto, they they said, "What's the next best bet?" I think they saw Rachel as like weak. They didn't think Rachel. They, Rachel was like Brendan's shadow at that time, and so they're like, "Well, let's not waste this hoh on Rachel. Let's get." Annie, who seems a little bit more capable, and boy, were they wrong. Like, to our, you know, benefit that Rachel wasn't the first boot of this. Could you imagine that world where Rachel was the first boot of this season? Isn't where would we be crazy? now? Where would we be now? Crazy. All the things that she's accomplished. I was looking through her IMDb earlier today. She has a, list, IMDb. Of, a list of things on her IMDb and um, is, you know, I'm going to be on the traders coming up soon. So, like, she, Please. where would she, yeah, we would be nowhere without um, the Queen Rachel Riley. <laughs> um, was there anything that Annie could have did to avoid this uh, outside of the brunch? Like, could she have made an alliance or something, Josie, or was she just screwed? I think the issue is that she didn't play. I think when you have a responsibility as a saboteur, the first thing you have to do is spread yourself. Make sure you're good with every single person, like connect with them with everything, you know? We saw her connect with Reagan earlier on about, like, you know, they're coming out and, like, being a part of the community and stuff like that, which I thought was super cool, super dope. And she could have had a lot of these relationships individually with people, and she should have started it from day one. She was playing an extra game, and I don't think she realized that, which is kind of her downfall. She kind of just did whatever she wanted, and she was like, well, you know, I'm going to hang out with Brendan and Rachel because those are people I fuck with. But, like... You should have gone and made relationships with everyone. Week one is so important because it's based off of nothing. So you absolutely have to make sure that every single side of the coin or the house you're covered in. Like everyone should be uncomfortable with you. You know, kiss some of kiss some of Aiden's butt. Aiden is like a guy's guy. You could tell that from the jump. Like I would have went out of my way and made sure. To go to other guys, you know, hang out with them, be cool with them, because then when him asks the guys or whatever their opinions, because you can tell he could he was gonna validate men's opinions over women. Ah, be the judge. <laughs> so 
she should have gotten there, you know, be, fr- be friends with the meow meow. I fear I have to say that because yikes, I can't believe that was his name. <laughs> not like every single person and not stay beside like Brendan and Rachel. And by the time she clued in, it was too late. Like, I was like, sister, do you realize the role you have? You are not to say that Annie was supposed to be the season, but you are the saboteur. It's the, it's supposed to be the season of the saboteur. Julie Chen opened the season with the saboteur. Like, you need to wake up a little. So that was a roses, sister. I don't know. There was, like, a lack of urgency from the jump, and I think that's that's the issue. I think maybe she she went into thinking that she's that, that girl because she got the twist, so she felt too comfortable too quickly. When it's week one. Come on now. That's Ridiculous. a good read. You're right. She really did fumble the bag there. Like that that could have been mm-hmm. her season. Kind of like, you know, Eric Stein as America's player, like that is the season of that. Like Danny was not the season. I'm sorry, girl. <laughs> hope she's well. I hope she's well though. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so I did actually just to refresh my memory, I had to pull the nicknames for the brigade. Um Enzo <laughs> was the meow meow. Everyone remembers that. Um, we got Hayden nicknamed the animal. Uh, Lane, the tough one, it was nicknamed the beast, and Matt was a smart, so he was the brain. So it's just funny. Hayden didn't really have a reason to be the animal, he just was that. Um, <laughs> but everyone else had something going on. But I, I just had to coin that real quick. Um, yeah, okay. I do. Before you move on to like another person, I do want to talk about the first HOH though. Can we bring those competitions back where people literally have to position like that's such good gameplay? Like having to see who's gonna get the most money, drop off first, who's gonna go second, where's the strategy lie? How do you navigate that? Like we need to bring those back because that's just added a layer. Cause then you have people who have more money. You have Incentive. people who wanted to throw at your wage. Like everyone was looking at Andrew sideways when he decided not to compete. Like I need more of those type of competitions back. Like they kind of did it a little bit with like the door for season like season 10 of big brother but like kevin got i think it was 78 dollars like not much so and but they didn't continue that which i kind of wish they did because that's just like another layer of targets but back in that time i feel like anytime you won money it was like a big target like on your back like i feel like every time someone won money it was like damn like these people are going to use it against me or i can use it against this person and we don't do that enough anymore so i don't know i kind of miss I could have missed it. And them jumping and falling, Kathy specifically, was very entertaining to me personally. I did laugh a little. Like the caramel, like the the competitions, the competitions this season are fear. Let's bring them back. I have, there are competitions from the season that I want to see redone. That's all I wanted to say. That's it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> um, so let's talk about Monet's week. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, Rachel is ready to get her revenge. She wins HOH. Um, we're going to see Brittany and Monet. They're getting very close. Uh, Brittany doesn't like a lot of people. Monet doesn't like a lot of people. They love to gossip. They're they're supposed to be like best friends here. Um, and the Mean Girls. Yes, they are. <laughs> but, um, Brittany, though, and, and Monet are rubbing Rachel the wrong way. Uh, they, they're consistently talking crap about Rachel here. And I think Rachel just naturally just didn't like them. Um, she's very catty to girls in all her seasons, which is pretty funny um but uh we're gonna see rachel here uh put up monet and britney she's like look i'm tired of these people uh they need to go <laughs> obviously britney wins ho8 i mean veto and you know things get complicated so the brigade specifically matt come up with an idea and matt's like look I'll go up as the pawn because I'm not going to go home. The brigade's on my back. Everyone's starting to have their duo outside of Enzo. You know, Lane's getting Brittany as his side. Uh, Hayden and uh, Kurt Kristen are kind of in the showmance. And then Matt and I think Reagan, they were getting very close. So um, naturally, if the votes go the brigade's way, they weren't going to go. So Matt tells Rachel to put him up on the block as a pawn to make her job easier. They could tell the whole house that – um, you know, he's on good sides with Brunchel. Obviously, it gets out. Uh, well, well, Matt's smart enough to tell people, I didn't tell them to put me up. What are they doing? Uh, they're trying to play me. Like, they were just playing the house at this point. This was kind of an early preview that the brigade was probably going to steamroll, and it was only week three. You know, it's unfortunate, but uh, we're, we're going to see Monet eliminated this week. Uh, she did not care. She did not like people. The only person she liked was Brittany. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, this was a pretty straightforward week but you know just 
Rachel being HOH and Rachel and Brendan just being hilarious television. It just made for a fun little week here. But how do we feel about uh, Monet's week, uh, Tito? I think it was it was a good week to get a little bit more character building from some people. I think the first week we kind of focused in on a few people. We got, I think, Monet and Brittany as more stars of this week because they were on the block, because they were upset. Um, we got a lot of their like conversations about like how they hated everybody. I remember specifically they would talk about like how high waisted Kristen's pants were. <laughs> pants were, and I was like, dang, like this is aging itself because I feel like high waisted pants like were in and now they're out again. Like it's a whole cycle of all that. So that was fun. Um, Monet was mean. I like thought I liked her, and then I watched it again. And I was like, <laughs> she like wasn't nice. Like, and that's editing. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like, there's more to her. Um, but yeah, I was like, okay, I guess she's gonna go. Um, notable. She's the only person of color, the only black woman, like in, on the cast, um, which I'm sure was a challenge for her to like, coexist in a Big Brother house in that way. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately she's kind of you know a forgettable second boot from an older season. So, not much to say about her. How are you, Josie? I don't know, like, obviously it's within me to root for everyone black, but damn, like, it was hard. Like, Monet, like, I don't know, I don't know if she wanted to be there, I don't know if she was a recruit, because to me she was giving recruit energy, Um, because, like, what was she, what was she here for? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, <laughs> what was she here for? Because she was like, I hate everyone here, um... <laughs> I don't want to kiss anyone's ass. And then when she had a conversation with Rachel, like, I think this is what's really frustrating is because, like, this whole week, to me, pointless. Pointless, pointless, pointless. I think I think Rachel kind of tried to extend an invitation to, you know, work with Brittany and Monet, and they just didn't care for it. They were like, we don't like her. We think she's a bitch. Like, fuck her. And, like, they didn't care. And I'm like, why are you here then? Because the whole point of the show is to go week by week and try to win some money. I don't know if it's because she got that big cash of money in the first week. <laughs> Again, let's bring back the car. Good for her. Good for her. So she didn't care. But sister, let me be serious. <laughs> let me be serious. This is not the summer to go and get a tan. No. It's the summer of securing more bags and winning. And I think sister just didn't care. And that's why I kind of forgot that she was on this season. So I was like, oh, shit. And I was like, she definitely is in the beginning. Because I didn't remember too much of this season. And I was like, she has to leave in the beginning. Because she's not even memorable at all. Like, I knew Annie was first boo. And I was like, after that, I don't really know until Rachel. So I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, I also did want to bring up, uh, I, 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 I think Ian puts it in the chat. I thought it was funny. Um like I said, Matt does get caught up here uh, <laughs> lying about uh, Rachel, not knowing Rachel is going to nominate him. But, you know, word gets back to her and, you know, she starts getting all pissy. Um, they have a little argument. Um, you know, not a big player in this season as well, but Andrew was actually pretty funny in this season. Um, Iconic. <laughs> uh, Rachel Iconic. With- <laughs> Rachel wins HOH and he starts screaming Mazel Tov. And then uh, people <laughs> are <laughs> Um, and then people are trying to go to Rachel, like, why is he so excited that you won HOH? And she was like, I don't know. Like, what's he doing? It was so doing? uncalled for. He was so <laughs> dramatic about it, too. It's like, damn. I loved that energy. But that fight also, I think, shows a pattern of, like, Matt's behavior, which is going to bite him in the butt in the end. I think that's why he kind of doesn't win. He thinks he big brains it so much. Like, he thinks he's such a genius. Mm. And to some degree, his gameplay and his strategy is very good. But because he's almost too arrogant and, like, I don't know. I don't know. I think he really thinks he he really is, like, the second coming of Albert Einstein. I'm sorry. But, like, it wasn't giving what he thought it was going to give. And I think he big brains it way too much. Like, that whole fight with Rachel could have been avoided. I would have pulled Rachel to the side. I would have said, I'm going to lie and say I didn't know. If you're not comfortable with that, don't put me up. Like, you know, cover your bases. Like, obviously, people are going to talk, especially Brittany, Monet, and Rachel. 
Listen. Be serious. Know your Not audience. The ones. <laughs> know your audience. Listen, like, I respect it, Matt because I think he was trying to give us good TV. And <laughs> he was like, if I'm going to be in the house, I just want to be a huge liar. Uh, you know, I, I totally forgot about this because uh, Lindsay brought it up. Um, you know, he completely lied about his wife having like an illness. Um, and everyone believed him and he used that sympathy to get in the house. Andrew actually calls Matt out this week about like, does your wife really have an illness? Like, I don't believe it. Da, 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 da. You know, so Matt is just kooky. Um, I think at first he was like, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but I'm going to have fun and try to ruin this house on my way out. But, um, you, you know, obviously he kind of calms it down once he sees a path towards the end, but I think he's just here to have fun originally. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you know, just to bring that up, but okay. So, I mean, that was Monet's week. So, we're going to go to the next week. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, uh, another thing that's been going on here uh, Kristen and Rachel have been talking a lot of crap about each other. Um, Kristen doesn't like Rachel. Uh, Rachel doesn't like Kristen. Rachel here is going to win HOH again, second time in three weeks. Wait, no, my, it's Matt's week first. Oh, I'm tripping. So sorry. That's yeah. nice. We're gonna give us a- <laughs> so sorry. Like preview. Sorry, preview. Like preview. So, Matt, I'm so sorry. Matt wins his HOA. Completely got my things wrong. But Matt does not want to cr- make any a lot of ways or anything. And then Matt, basically, he is going to put up Kathy and Andrew. Uh, people are actually in Matt's ear early his, this this week, um, telling them put up Brunchel. Everyone wants Brunchel out. But since Matt is already on a rocky relationship with Brunchel, you know, he just lied about everything. They're, they're not all the way off of him, but they're like, what are you doing? He's like, all right, I won't put him up. Um, You know, you know, the brigade specifically were kind of pushing him to do it, but he still didn't do it, which is kind of like a preview to like the downfall of Matt Hoffman. Um, But he does put up, like I said, Kathy, Andrew, neither one of them come off on a block. And Andrew was already, like we said, was in hot water. So he was screwed uh, from the moment that he didn't win HOH, in my opinion. So he does go here. Um, He has one of the more iconic exits uh, in his five message. He does call out Hayden and Kristen and says that they have a a romance that no one else is really seeing because everyone thinks they're brother and sister friendship. They're like, no, they actually have a showmance. No one else sees it, but I see it. I, you know, (laughs) I witnessed them kissing under the sheets and (laughs) like Andrew completely blows up their game. So, uh, you know, Andrew's gone here, but he was like, I'm going to start chaos on my way out. But, you know, it was a straightforward week, you know, a lot of the season are straightforward weeks, but people just doing something really dumb or crazy on their way out. Um, and this <laughs> is a great example of that. Uh, Josie, but how did you feel about Andrew, Andrew's game? Okay, I just want to pull up Ian's comment because Ian says Andrew really thought he was the star of the season. <laughs> Let me tell you something. He was the star of my season, okay? He was the star. He was nothing but pure chaos. Like, he was talking about kosher. Like, I think that was the first time I've ever, like, I I ever saw anyone who was Jewish on TV. I think that was the first time I did. And so I was like, oh, I don't know what this means. But he was so fun to me. He was just so chaotic. Like, chaotic good. Like, just, like, I think he had good intentions at heart. But he was just so chaotic and messy that it, it, it was just too good. It was too good of a, like... Mm, an E. I think Matt did the best move for his game. I get that the brigade wanted Frenchel to go on the block, but you know, Kathy and Andrew had voted to evict him when he was on the block. So that just made more sense for his game. And like, I, I think a lot of what the brigade wanted was this mob mentality of doing everything that I guess specific individual wanted. I think honestly, Enzo was the loudest within that group. Um, and I think he did call a, some, a lot of some of the decisions that they made the entire season. Um, so I think it was just like, he was like, no, I'm going to do what makes sense for my game. And it does make sense for Matt to do what's best for his game because he's going to be in a better position to help the brigade later on. Like, I think that's the issue with the brigade. They're not thinking, like, how can we individually help each other? They're thinking, we have to be this unit. We have to do everything together. But, like, that's going to only help at the end of the day, it's only going to help one person and it's still an individual game. And I think Matt is one of the only people who tapped into that very early on, which I think it's important to think about. You came into this game as one person. So 
I mean, I think it was a good move. It made sense for the entire house why he put them up. And Rachel and Brandon were always going to be a target before him in the brigade, which automatically helps them. So I just, you know, I think he got a lot of flack for it, but I think it just made sense. I'll give credit where credit is due, and Matt will get credit for me in this moment. How about you, Tito? Yeah, I guess I didn't think about it that way. In my mind, like, it was more so he was big brain, trying to big brain again. Um, I think his intention was to, like, target Brendan and Rachel, and then they were shocked, like, when Brendan won the veto. And it was like, oh, we never considered this possibility ever that maybe they would win the veto. And it just seemed like one of those mistakes that wouldn't happen in Modern Big Brother. We're like, yeah, we're putting, or I guess maybe it could have been, I guess, yeah, that's what it was. It was a backdoor, right? Wanted a backdoor, one of them. Um, but that was their errors, that they are both chosen to play the veto. So in my mind, I think I see it as a kind of a fail for Matt in that way. I see where you're coming from and that it might be a success. But in my mind, like, Andrew had no reason to be going. Andrew was hurting nobody. Absolutely. Andrew was yeah. he had nobody in his corner. <laughs> Andrew's entire personality in the three weeks he was there was that he was Jewish. Like, how many times did we hear that he can't have slop because it's not kosher? Like, just in like like snippets, like it, was, like it was like Frank and Ben it into random areas. And it's like what <laughs> we were talking about. It was just so random to me. Um, it was it's that time I think in like CBS casting where everyone is cast for a very particular reason. And I think that his particular reason was that he was Jewish. I was mm. watching The Amazing Race, like older seasons too. And there's very much that going on with teams of like, this is our gay couple team and their entire identity is that they are a gay couple. And so mm. I guess I saw that a lot with him in terms of like, he is our Jewish guy for the cast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Captain Kosher does go this week, but, uh, all right. I forgot so. about that. I see, 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 that's good. I like All that. right. Love, I'm sorry. I loved him. <laughs> let's get let's get Andrew back. Let's He's get him back. <laughs> I, <laughs> I get someone like though. Andrew. I get someone like Andrew. Because that was so good. Like they're characters. Like we want like something funny. Like that's naturally funny. Like almost like I don't want to give but Jasmine, like the way she speaks sometimes, you're like, damn, like what the <laughs> But like it's a character, you know. Andrew was a character at the time, and he was giving what was supposed to be game. I'm sorry, that exit. Be serious. His exit changed the game. Like I don't think we like Andrew's exit literally trickles the end. Like, I, like oh my god. Like I his impact. His impact. Like I'm Listen, sorry. You can't deny instead that you're right. Instead of fans versus favors, we need a, a fans versus flops. Um, we could have like uh, Andrew, Devin Shepard, you know, just like a lot of like the crazy Devin people Shepherd out did not there. Flop. He was not allowed oh, please. The space not. <laughs> to thrive like as he would. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. So uh now we're going to the week that I was talking about. This is uh Kirsten's week. Um so first of all, like I said, uh Kirsten and Rachel don't like each other. They talk a lot of crap to each other. Um uh, Rachel wins her second uh HOH in four weeks and she does the iconic floaters grab a life best. Um <laughs> you're going home, Kristen. Uh hands her the keys and then she actually throws it like it's, it's so bad. Um but Rachel does not care here. Um, obviously, since Matt honored the deal, look, they didn't, she didn't put up Matt either. Um, Andrew was effective in something with exposing Hayden and Kristen, Kristen's, uh, Kristen, so sorry, Hayden and Kristen's little uh, bond going on. Um, we're going to see Rachel actually base her nominations off of she does not like Kristen. Um, and she said that... <laughs> She said that Kristen is is a flop, basically. Like she's she's floating <laughs> and she's latching onto Hayden's success. So Hayden needs to go on a block with her. So they're on the block. Brittany wins veto, and she's actually considering using the veto. Um, but since Rachel, actually, I think it's a good move here, threatens to put Lane up on the block if one of them is taken off, and Lane is the next closest person to Brittany since Monet goes. Um, Brittany does not use it. Uh, we're going to see the punishments from the veto actually get handed out. Uh, if it wasn't a bad week for Kristen, it gets even worse because she's wearing a hippie unitard, which they love to do at this era of Big Brother. Um, and, you know, Matt, uh, Hayden was in solitary confinement, but uh, we're going to see hippie Kristen leave this week. Uh, and th there you go. Like, this is also another straightforward week. Not a lot of rocks in the boat. Um, I do think that this is a heavily dominated Brenchel week. 
instead of a brigade week. I think uh, Brunch will really dominate this week. And, you know, this was the only week that they did a lot of good work uh, this season. So um, good for them. But Kristen goes. And, you know, any week that Rachel's HOH in any season is always going to be cracked. So (laughs) (laughs) um, (laughs) um, uh, how do you feel about Kristen's game, uh, Josie? I'm about to drag Kristen. I'm sorry. I have to. Literally. Thank you for getting us started. They, <laughs> here's my issue with Kristen. Like, I feel like these people just didn't know what show they were on. And my, first of all, Kristen gets into arguments with several people before this. She got in an argument with Andrew. She's like, I was going to give you my vote, but like, now you're like talking about me. And I just don't like that. I don't like that. And I'm like, okay, okay. So, you know, she just doesn't care. She doesn't keep like to keep things, you know, close. I don't think she likes to do like like control, like damage control, like at all. And so she gets into this fight with Rachel. Rachel wins, okay? She's HOH. Instead of swallowing one's pride as you should in this game, she goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, if you're in the moment. You know, then you have time to maybe, I don't know, think about forgiveness. Now, Rachel, as a character, she does this thing, and she does this throughout the entire season. She gets into big arguments, says a lot of mean things, whether they're warranted or not, that's a conversation for another time. And then she'll go up to them, and she goes, I'm really sorry. And she's and she wants people to accept her apology in that moment, in that instance. And normally, people who have game sense are like, yeah, I forgive you, and I apologize as well. Rachel goes up to Kristen. She goes, I'm sorry. Chris is like, I don't want to apologize. I don't want your apology. She's HOH. She's HOH. Like, swallow your pride and say, thank you, Rachel. I appreciate you coming to me and apologizing to me. I apologize as well. Like, she didn't want to. And Hayden was like, can you, like, apologize? And he, she was like, no. She was like, I don't want to. And I'm like, yeah, your ego, whatever. But for that amount of money, I don't know. I don't know if we signed up for the same show. But if I was on the house, I would have apologized. I would have, you know, said, hey, how can I help you? You know, let's build this trust this week. She did none of that. And she just didn't care. She she just didn't care. And the fact that she had a boyfriend, y'all dragged Ooh. Christine from BB16 to the floor. But Chris had a whole ass man back home and she was kissed up on Hayden, you know, trying to keep it a secret. I thought they were trying to keep it from a secret from the house. Actually, they're trying to keep it a secret from her man. That was gag worthy. Gag worthy. I just think she was just, I don't know if she thought she was on Bachelor Paradise. I don't know what she thought this was, but she wasn't doing what she was required to do. Every time she would talk to people and get into conflict, it was so minuscule and she would make them bigger than they needed to be. Like, oh my god, it was just so frustrating. Again, one person who I think just like should must have been recruited because the game sense was just not there. I was like, Rachel, it's because I don't lie to people. <laughs> and she did lie. Like, she did whole, lie. Whole identity was I don't lie. <laughs> and I told you that I don't lie. And I was like, sister. Yeah, oh my um, god. I will actually piggyback because me, me and Josie were talking before the stream. I do think this was vital for the eventual winner, Hayden's game, uh, because I think Hayden was making a lot of bad decisions, actually, while Kristen was in the season. Um, you know, the brigade was voicing multiple times that they were worried about how close Kristen and Hayden were getting. He did not care. Uh, they started getting openly close with each other after they got exposed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if Kristen didn't go, I think Hayden would have been lost in the sauce. And I think instead of them flipping on Matt, they could have flipped on Hayden. You know, so, uh, you know, it's it's actually low-key really good for his game that she left here. But we're going to see Kristen leave. Uh, is there is there any last things that you have, Tito, before we, before we move on? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's a really good call. I think that Kristen does ruin Hayden's game moving forward. But w- one thing that I wanted to know is that who was Kristen before this fight? She was invisible for three weeks. Mm-hmm. We like never saw her. Yeah. Rachel Riley made her a human on the show. Get and that, like just that whole floaters grab a life vest. This is an iconic moment that she's a part of, I guess, but is so irrelevant at the same time. Kristen, how many HOHs have you won, huh? Like you had just as so much as <laughs> that I did, and you didn't. It's just like that's just so like 
peak Rachel Riley, and it's unfortunate <laughs> that the other end of it is this irrelevant person who we don't discuss. <laughs> Can't you believe that this is a person that won Big Brother like a season later? I I don't. But uh, that's why it's so great. <laughs> And that like imagine television. another world where Kristen apologizes to Rachel and Rachel's like, hmm, maybe we don't send Kristen out and they become a little you know, like we don't I, I just keep thinking of these alternate realities where like things happen differently and we don't get what we get. I mean, this is definitely her her villain season for sure. <laughs> no, if Kristen honestly, like to piggyback on what you're saying, like if Kristen apologizes, I personally, from how I viewed it, Rachel takes apologies and she tries to make them better. We see this especially with Brittany, who just did not give a fuck about Rachel this entire season. She didn't give a fuck. And Rachel actually tried. She actually tried to make things. She tried to make a friendship out of her. I don't know if that was more personal than gameplay. But if Kristen would have just taken it, because they wanted, let's not forget, Brendan and Rachel wanted to work with Hayden and Kristen. Like, that yeah. was That was supposed their, to be a strong foursome. That was supposed to be the alliance. And they said yes. And when, you know, and that's what I mean, bad management. This is why on the other side of things, we'll talk about Hayden later, but I just think Hayden has very bad people management in the beginning of the season. And Kristen, Brendan, and Rachel are no exception. So I just, I don't know, like there could have, like all it took was for people to swallow their pride. Could you imagine saying that if I would have swallowed my pride, I would have gotten X amount of money that could have changed my life. For yep. pride. Oh my god. Kristen was anyways. <laughs> anyways. Um real quick, because I'm I, I was this close to forgetting. I have not been showing clips the past couple podcasts. I'm enjoying the, the conversations, but this is the one clip out of many that I, I was trying to decide that I wanted to put in. But um this is one of my favorite clips from the season. So this was during Rachel's HOH week. Um. Will you hear me in the next Yeah. Just two? Oh, my gosh. Brendan and Rachel are in the backyard, so we decided to go hang out in Rachel's HOA room. There's got to be a way to do this. It can't be that hard if she can figure it out, right? Will you please go downstairs? I just want to do, like, a reenactment. Of course, you can't hang out in Rachel's HOA room without making fun of her. Letters <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. get a letter! <laughs> 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 Tequila! Who wants to see my Joshua? Is everybody here? Who wants Tequila? Oh. <laughs> Busted. This could be pretty bad. I mean, she's HOH, and I definitely don't want to be on her bad side. <laughs> And saw Brittany and Matt, I was like, hilarious! Waters, grab a hat, <laughs> Kristen! <laughs> I like the random voguing and posing that never really happened. I hate that word is here. I can't believe that Rachel is so clueless that she doesn't even understand that all we were doing was making fun of her. I heard you make it out! I heard it! <laughs> <laughs> I did say that. I can't say She's so good. A... <laughs> so good. Like, ah. Somebody but earlier think... said Britney is God tier entertainment, and they were right. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. obviously, Britney carries in another sense of the like season, <laughs> for sure. What was this cast? Anyway, all right, so let's move on. <laughs> um, uh, so the next week, uh, Matt is going to win HOH. Uh, I you don't. know, this is. <laughs> Again, uh, this is going to be the week where the house is starting to notice that this guy is a straight snake. Uh, Matt is going to win his HOH, and he's going to go back on his word and put up Brendan and Rachel. Um, they're the power couple. You know, Rachel's won two things. Brendan is Brendan. Um, so they're going to target these two. Uh, and, you know, Rachel's pissed. She's like, what are you guys doing? I mean, what are you doing, Matt? You're a liar. What about our deal? I think this is the week where he's like, well, Brendan, you big dumb dum You're going on the block. <laughs> like, he just he does not care. Um, Rachel's pissed um, because Brittany wins 
POV and she's not going to use it. Rachel Star and Tyra, she's fighting with Kathy. She's fighting with Reagan. She's just calling everybody out. She's livid. Um, and, you know, it, you know, it's, it's, it seems like, obviously, since the V is not going to be used, that if one of those two were going to go, it's going to be Rachel because she's winning too much stuff and she's kind of irritable. Um, we're going to see one. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to see one Pandora's box actually be played here. Um, during Matt's HOH, um, this is where he gets the Diamond Power Vita, which I spoke about a little bit at the beginning of the podcast. And uh, they were going to bring back the saboteur twist. Uh, and they're giving the offer to Reagan for two weeks to be the saboteur. Yeah, I mean, that, that it's a pretty straightforward week. I hate to keep saying that every week, but that's what this season is. But it's a lot of drama in the middle of it. But uh, Tina, how did you feel about the downfall of the legend Rachel Riley here? This is not the downfall. This is just a slight speed, <laughs> speed bump. It's just in her in her reign to success. Um, but yeah, I think what's notable here is that when they're back on the block together, Brendan and Rachel, that now she's the target. When they were on the block together in the first week, it was all Brendan. It was all Brendan. So I think that she established herself as like the person to be, the competitor, the one that wins, the one that... Um, could maneuver maybe communication with people. I think they said that specifically. Like if we take if we leave Rachel in, she could you know talk to Brittany. She could talk to Kathy. She could like build some sort of resistance. They didn't really say that about Brendan. So I think that this is kind of establishing her as like the player to beat in the week. Um, I think this is also the week where they brought back Jeff and Jordan. Am I mistaking that for like the veto yes. No one needed them. Goodbye. Just had to point it out. Um, but yeah, I think that also when. Um, Rachel gets evicted. I think that we see just her light shine. I think her as a TV character, as a Big Brother player. I just couldn't can't say enough good things about Rachel. And I think that um, the Pandora's box the next week um, is probably very specific to who to who went out this week. So I don't know if that was necessarily intentional until they found out that it was Rachel, the one that was leaving, to be the one that, to be brought back the next week. How about you, Josie? Yeah, I don't know. I think this is what I found annoying, okay? Because the first, so pretty much up until this point, we kind of see the pendulum swinging. So it goes from one end to the other. So Hayden wins. Then we see Rachel win. Then we see Matt win. Then we see Rachel win. And then Matt wins again. And yes, I get why this time around he's like, okay, I got to put them up. But again, like, Rachel was not going to go after Brendan. Like, they kind of, like, that one, the week three, even though at the end of week three after Brendan won, he realized, damn, I should have put them up. Like, he, they were never going against him specifically. You know, this is an, it, I can't say this enough. This is an individual game. If you're going to play for the brigade, what she was, you need to play for them till the very end. And that's what I think is his major downfall. But we'll, we'll, we'll nip that for later. Now, when it comes to the week itself, they're like, okay, Rachel, Brendan, let's go after Rachel. Let's be serious. Brendan won two POVs. Rachel won two HOHs. They either or could have gone, but they should have kept Rachel. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me explain to you. Rachel is so unlikable to the rest of the house. Like, <laughs> Reagan is supposed to be this sen- like this angel and like later on, we see her, we see Ray get into it with Rachel, but you can tell that he's already frustrated with her. Like no one in the house likes her. There is no way she was gonna win this season. You see, there's not a lot of long-term thinking because if I was Matt or the Brigade, like, you know, or any individual player, I'd be like, okay, let's keep Rachel. Rachel's gonna keep winning these competitions. Still gonna be a bigger threat and no one likes her. If and if you have Rachel's loyalty, you have Rachel's loyalty. Rachel has not proven to be, be distrustworthy at all. If anything, she's just shown her loyalty. And I'm sorry, in a game of Big Brother, loyalty is currency. That is how you navigate and get closer to the game. You need allies. You can't win this game without allies. I have yet to see one person not win like because they, they were a lone wolf. There's no way. You never win a game like that. Maybe in Survivor, but not in Big Brother. So that, like, being said, I just think, you know, Brendan could have had, like, an easy way of infiltrating the brigade specifically. Like, we kind of see Brendan kind of take Matt's spot later on, almost as, like, this filler position. And I just think, you know, it was, it should have been in Matt's best interest to push this, push Brendan out for sure. 
Like, you know you're in a guy's alliance. Be serious. Get rid of the guy. Get rid of the guy. Be serious. <sighs> I Be mean, serious. so the only reason I'm, I'm going to push back on that a little bit is because you see how Rachel is. Uh, when she wants someone out, it's her job 24-7 to make sure you are on blast, right? Um, if, Kristen. if she survived this week, <laughs> not only she's coming after Reagan, she's going to be putting Matt public enemy number one um she's gonna be telling everybody that matt needs to go she does not give a damn that once brendan's gone all hell's gonna break loose uh, i feel like who brent matt who's already on rocky road with some people um is it's gonna look even worse you know so i i, I do think the person who's also actively one of the competitions if you're gonna have to choose between two people who are both gonna come after you uh pick the person that potentially can actually get you out not the person who's not winning jack you know so I, um I, well brendan was winning they had equal amount of competition wins not the time fair. though right no brendan had want? two h he, he had he yeah, had veto okay week one okay that's and right then that's POV right. Will, 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 anyone had competition wins it was miss britney who would have thought that britney was the 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 competition threat i would yeah. have i forgot britney was winning pov's left right and center and then an hoh to top it off like damn sister like she went two pedos back to back to back i mean yeah. look at the material but what i meant is i don't think matt should have put them up in the first place period. okay like he had think, already yeah, built, he also did have some house pressure on him because he was close to reagan too reagan was like throw put the her wage throw the yeah. hoh wage like yeah he, Here's like Matt's gameplay is at, so yeah. frustrating to me. He could have thrown, he would have been safe. He did the work in week three for nothing. He pretty much wasted his week. Like you said, you he wasted it on Andrew and relatively like King Kosher, whatever. But <laughs> all I'm saying is that like you put all this weekend for week three to then reverse it in week five after you're already the person you meet good graces win, wins HOH week four. It just didn't make sense for him. Like, Matt is so infuriating to watch. Like, he just thinks he's, again, second coming of Albert Einstein. And then he does things to, like, tarnish the work that he does constantly. Like, this is, it'll be a reoccurring theme. You know what I mean? Like, people love to say Matt was raw. Matt was raw. No, no. He did moves that just did not make sense. And this is one of them. He shouldn't have put them up to begin with. He should have thrown it. Let Brendan had an HOH. They wouldn't put any up, anyone up but him. They would have had the votes to keep the brigade safe. Like, there was no point in that. Like, that was such a dumb week. But that's just me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So that's uh that is the origin story of the eventual winner of Big Brother 13 and Rachel Riley's week. Okay, so we're heading <laughs> to the next week. <laughs> um, we're gonna see Brendan win his first HOH. Uh, you know, Josie was a little right here, uh, winning his third competition's first HOH and <laughs> did he it just me? Did I freeze? He froze. No, okay. Um <laughs> sorry, I think I froze. So sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> was I was like, what do I, what do I do? I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is acting crazy. I'm so sorry. Uh, but let me, let me. So basically, Brendan wins his HOH here. Um, he's doing everything in memoriam for his girl, Rachel, who just left. Um, he is going to put up Reagan <laughs> because. <laughs> because Reagan was arguing with his girlfriend, and he's not here for it. And he's also going to put up Lane as a pawn. Um, we're going to see Reagan win his first competition, and he's also the saboteur, so that was a little bonus. And you know, Reagan's feeling like he's on cloud nine right now. His closest ally is Matt. Oh, Brendan's like, you know what? Well, we're going to put Matt up. And Matt goes on the block. Well, actually, let me pause before I even get to that. Pandora's box happens, and um, he was promised a vacation. He's really just like alone <laughs> by himself. While Rachel, <laughs> Rachel comes back into the house and argues with everyone else, like Reagan, she leaves a message and pretzels for so Brendan. Dirty for that. <laughs> they knew exactly what they were doing. Um, but now the veto ceremony comes. Uh, Brendan's actually going to put Matt up on the block, but the Diamond Power veto is played here, and Matt takes himself off the block, um, and he actually puts up Kathy. This is a problem, before we get to Kathy. Um, going in, since it was Lane and Matt so were supposedly about to be on the block together, we're actually kind of 
seeing Matt being told by the rest of his brigade members, Enzo and Hayden, like, look, if we got to pick between you and Lane, we're going to pick Lane. Like, like unfortunately, you're going to go home, Matt. We're sorry about this. And he was like, okay, cool. Obviously, he's a little down by that. Use the diamond power veto. And instead of putting up one of his two brigade members, who literally just showed you you're at the bottom of the alliance, he puts up Kathy. Who who the hell is Kathy going to be? Let's be honest. Oh, uh, so <laughs> Kathy does go here uh, against uh, Lane, um, which is crazy. Zero votes to eliminate Lane and mind blown. But Kathy does go here. This is. Uh, the, in my opinion, one of Matt's biggest mistakes because it's like, look, these people are literally telling you they're going to eliminate you. They're showing you're at the bottom of the alliance. This guy's still loyal to the brigade. He still believes in the brigade brand. Um, and, you know, even Reagan, I would say, is like his next closest ally. I feel like everyone kind of felt some type of way that Matt wasn't telling them about the Diamond Power of Vito after this week. So, you know, it's it's a little messy here. McAfee does go here. I mean, <laughs> Officer Kathy is such a non-factor, one of the biggest non-factors of Big Brother U.S., but, I mean, she was here. Uh, how, how do we feel about Kathy's demise? How do we feel about this week in general, Josiane? So dumb. So <laughs> utterly dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. Like, it's actually... Oh my God, it is the privilege of having the diamond power of veto. You get to see everyone reveal their cards to you. Like that is a blessing in the game. Like this, you can set yourself up to win with this specific necklace that you didn't even merit because you walked into a box. Technically, it was a room, but nonetheless, that was the point. Pandora's box. And you use it and you don't put another brigade member up? Are you kidding me? They just told you they were evicting you, bro. This same scenario, if you guys stay loyal to each other, will happen at Final Four. Like, his arrogance, and this is what's so upsetting. We get a confessional at some point. Um, I think it's when he won week five HOH and they're, he's telling like the story of like the brigade members falling off. And he's like, well, none of them are winning comps. Like, it's just me. Like, I'm the one carrying the team. I shouldn't be called the brains. I should be called the muscle because I'm carrying blah, blah, which was true. He kind of gagged him with that. Valid. Absolutely. But like, hello? They literally told you they were evicting you. You have Brittany and Reagan as strong allies right now. You fucked up. You fucked up last week. It's okay. Brendan is mad at you. But you put two brigade members up there. You tell everyone about the brigade. And you are in the best position to win. You say, hey, everyone, this is the alliance. They all told me that they're going to evict me. Lane gets, that means Brittany feels betrayed by Lane. So obviously she's going to stick by Reagan and Matt. Reagan was never going to, Reagan was crying for Matt. Crying. Like someone was dying. It felt like Paloma's exit all over again. But it was just between Matt and Reagan. And it was absolutely absurd. Like, this is your chance to win. And once again, Matt is doing moves that just don't make sense. Like, he plays an individual game, but then he's, like, brigade strong. Then the brigade tells him he's going to evict them, and he's still, like, brigade strong. Like, when, when you don't pick your time right. Like, I don't know. This season made me realize how, like, some of these people who think they're mega masterminds really – don't got like they act like their shit don't stink and in fact it is the worst smelling thing i have ever seen in my life that's it that's it how about you tina i mean you're not wrong <laughs> <laughs> it was it's a really it really is a big misplay i feel like having that like what probably the biggest power in big brother that we've seen to this point and to use it in, in such a way to not advance yourself any further. Um, and I think it was uh, notable, like, at the very next HOH, he threw it. He threw he throws the very next HOH that where he was, you know, basically told just the week before that he was going to go home. And he thought he was safe. He thought he was safe to throw the next HOH. Like, he's, yeah. The more you say it, Josie, the more I do realize, like, he was big bringing everything, thinking he was, like, 
superior knowledge to everybody else, but he was he was right there. They were all the same level. And if anything, he was worse because he had the power to make change and to do things and he didn't do it. I still do think I would like to see him play again. I'm surprised he hasn't been invited to play again. I feel like he's like a memorable character, someone who's good in the DR, someone who like I was rooting for at the time that I first saw it. Um, because he was like entertaining. I think the rest of the brigade is kind of I don't care. Like they're boring TV mm-hmm. characters. I think Matt's the only one that like gives you something. Um, and so for that reason alone, like I want to see him back. But I think that he ha- maybe could have an even a better game sense at that point too. Uh, we, I, I do remember seeing. <laughs> I know a lot of people not going to like me name job in this game. Uh, we we saw him play in the Sequester Big Brother game, and Matt was freaking oh, hilarious. Yeah. In that, yeah, so, you know, he was I, funny. I would, uh, he was funny. I would love to see him back, you know. But um, two key points I did forget to bring up that goes into the next week that we're about to speak about. Um, Brittany promises Brendan if she wins HOH next week, she's not going to nominate him, which is a big reason why he did nominate uh, Brittany. Second thing was actually that Matt. Well, I mean, let's just talk about the next week. Matt here is pissed off because he's like, "Look, Enzo told me he was going to eliminate me. Like, let's let's get rid of Enzo." You know what I'm saying? Brittany wins HOH, and immediately the brigade are just like imploding. They're they're turning on each other. Matt's going to Brittany and be like, "Look, put up Enzo. He's going to take me out. You know, he's a threat." Um, and then you got Enzo and the rest of the brigade going to Brittany and be like, put up Matt, make him the pawn. Like, he won't go home, put up Matt. Obviously, it's getting a little clustery and messy because Brittany really trusts Lane. Um, but she's also starting to develop something with Reagan here. Um, and Reagan is very close to Matt at the time. So um, she does start sniff not even her it was reagan reagan starts sniffing out that there is an alliance of all guys and does figure it is the brigade names every single person in his diary room being a part of the brigade very correctly here um but Brittany is going to stick with reagan here and nominate brendan who, even though she promised that she wasn't going to she nominates brendan because she really doesn't like brendan and she's going to nominate enzo like matt requested uh this is the fun challenge where you know a bunch of people do the comp and you get prizes and punishments uh and the more punishments you take you know the better it was funny we saw Brittany and uh brendan get handcuffed for the rest of the week which is another one of my favorite moments of the season uh brendan cuts his hair and basically goes bald <laughs> like uh the season's crazy but um we're going to see brendan win the pov took as many punishments as possible to stay in the house. It, you know, it's fun to see Brendan in the season, um, just a sidebar, because, you know, Rachel gets eliminated early and Brendan gets to play out. And then the next season, Brendan gets re- eliminated early and Rachel gets to play it out. So I thought that was fun. But uh, Brendan does get the veto um, and it gets messy because for some reason, this is another issue with Matt Hoffman here. <laughs> He's going to go and try to rally the troops. He's going to try to tell the brigade members and Brittany, let's take out Reagan. We, we, you know, the one person in this season who is looking <laughs> out for you, he throws under the bus, even though he just won to end out the last week. Why not throw Hayden up, you know? Instead, he's like, look. We need to throw up Reagan. I don't know why. I'm just threatened by Reagan. He's very smart. And, you know, Brittany did not like this. She was very annoyed. And I really feel like Matt doing this really pushed Brittany to Lane's corner even farther than she was already. Um, You know, she tells Reagan. Reagan felt some type of way. And he loses Reagan. Matt has no allies. He already pissed off Brendan earlier in the week. The brigade is done with him. The entire house is done with Matt. This is one of the few times I have ever seen this deep in the season that the entire house is against someone after you had them all in your corner at one point. But completely ruins it. I don't know why Matt didn't expose the brigade. He had so many opportunities to expose the brigade as well and blow it up on his way out while he was in the house. He doesn't do it. And Matt is eliminated here. Another unanimous vote. There's a bunch of them this season, but another unanimous vote, four to zero, and Matt goes home next to Enzo. One of the worst weeks for a Big Brother player, in my opinion, because he started off with the opportunity to kind of like turn the whole house on Enzo and the crew, but instead he chose Reagan. And I, you know, what's annoying is that 
you have the diamond power of Vito that you could have threw Enzo up if you really want to Enzo. You pick Kathy. Then you come in this week saying, put Enzo up, which Brittany does. And then once the veto is used, instead of saying Hayden or Lane, you say, hey, let's throw a break in. Like, I don't know what the objective was here. Uh, I've never seen someone in the majority alliance and with the most OP veto this season just throw it all away. But but here we are. Uh, Josiane. How you know? No, before we get to Josie, you started last time. Tito, how do you feel <laughs> about Matt's game this week? I mean, yeah, it's a huge turnaround. I feel like he was the one who like had the potential to do a lot. He had relationships, you know, accumulated power, was good in competitions. Like he was the one people were looking at. Like this is the game changer. This is the game maker here, and just kind of like to make every wrong decision, like. Is impressive. Like, good for him. Like, he chose wrong every single time. And also, it being Britney's HOH, like, he needed to use her as a tool to do this. Like, if he, this was the point where he turns on the brigade, they already were going to turn on him in the previous week. What do I do? Let me pull in Brendel, Br- Brendel, Brendan and Reagan. Let me pull Britney in. So then make her, you know, like, Lane will be good, but let's put up Hayden, Hayden and Enzo. And like, it'll be his move. And he'll like kind of have that power structure underneath him. And he fully, I don't know, cut himself off at his own legs. Like, it was his doing that made him the weakest player in the game at that point and ultimately sent himself home. Um, and I think that he, that didn't have to be the case. Like, he had the power. He had the relationships. He had the knowledge to be able to flip that tri- flip that part of the game around and move advance forward. Um, that, that could have been, right, where Enzo or Hayden goes, and the whole game looks different if they're not there any longer. So... Definitely fumbled the bag on that one, and um, honestly, I loved it. <laughs> How about you, Josie? <sighs> um, <laughs> I just feel like, like I just feel like, I'm I really am trying to put myself in my shoes, but I really don't fathom anyone just like blindly ignoring the fact that there are literally red flags all over the place. Like I, it, I really don't. You literally the week before. These two brigade members told you they were going to evict you. You were going home. The vote was supposed to be 5-0 for you to go. You are not in a good position. The fact that he went out of his way to throw the first, first of all, start the week off by throwing the HOH. The fuck? Like, you were supposed to be evicted (laughs) 5-0. What is not clicking? What is not clicking? What is not tapping? You are not in a good position, my guy. So he then goes and throws the HOH. Okay. You know what? At least Brittany wins. That is, you know, they have made a three. It was Reagan, Brittany, and Matt. Like, that was the group. That was, you know, the core. They were saying last week when Brendan was HOH, they were begging for none of them to go up. Like, they really didn't want to. Because that was supposed to be the group. Matt was so well positioned, the fact that he was in the middle of the brigade and um, Reagan and Brittany. And where I think he mismanages is when he doesn't make the brigade feel comfortable enough with the fact that he has such good side relationships with both Reagan and Brittany. And that's why I have to give credit where credit is due because Lane clearly was, had a strong relationship with Brittany and it didn't bother them as much until like the end of the game when it was a kind of already too late, it didn't matter. You know what I mean? So that's why I think Matt flops because he is in such a good position and he's just so careless about it. He just doesn't care. He doesn't like to look at the numbers and the facts. The facts were Brittany and Reagan had his back more than the brigade did period like it just there's no arguing that it's literally what's not clicking what's not clicking and so then for us to then have him put Enzo up and block brendan wants POV. okay he should have gone out to brendan and you know try to make things work immediately before he even thought he was a possibility then he should have looked at the numbers hmm let's say hypothetically reagan goes am i still good no, you're not because you were supposed to be gifted 5 0, maybe 4 1 with Reagan's vote. Like, this is crazy to me. This is crazy to me. This is the one and only person who has your back. Like, I I literally can't fathom it. Like, I really do. Ju- I genuinely, for someone who thinks, again, second coming of Albert Einstein, for them to do the moves that they did just did not make any sense. Like, why Reagan? These guys were going to vote to evict you. Push Hayden. You push Hayden because she was not going to put Lane up. If she, if he pushes Hayden, one of the brigade members goes. 
but he's technically not responsible for it. So Lane can get mad at him. So he's mm-hmm. still good with everyone left except for maybe <laughs> Brendan. But and he's smooth like there's like Matt. It's like it's like having a golden map to the treasure and giving it to someone else and saying, I'm gonna figure it out on my own. <laughs> Crazy, crazy, crazy. Not the, <laughs> not the sound effect. Not the sound effect. I mean, yeah. If the shoe fits, but yeah, just ridiculous. Like Matt, Matt is, and he wasn't even the brains. Uh, we'll talk about it later. He loves to say I was the brains of the brigade. He likes to discredit Enzo, but I will be the first. And this is shocking. If you watch BB twenty two. And you read my tweet. You know how I feel about Enzo. Credit where credit is due. Enzo deserves a lot more credit than Matt wants to give him credit for. When the game speaks for itself, I'm. That's it. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> uh, Four zero. But wait, guys, hold on. We have a double eviction tonight. Yes, <laughs> it's a double eviction. Um, <laughs> Um, Hayden wins HOH very quickly, puts up Brendan and Reagan, and Reagan's like, I'm not going home, wins veto again. And Brittany is put as the the replacement. I'm I'm gonna be I'm just be straightforward. The fact that the moment Brendan didn't win veto, it was over for him. Brendan leaves the season. Uh Mm -hmm. during the the double, there was like no shot. Um, you know, Brendan, 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 you know, he is. Low key, one of the a big brother great as well, just like his wife. Uh, I feel like Brendan um, is just it's a it's a hard character to really to really cast. He's just very cringe, but he has mm-hmm. a lot of heart. And especially this season, he was the comp beast. He was trying to win everything. He tried to win his way out. Obviously, it didn't work here. But you know, this is the guy. The hope was romantic. He tried to win off of love. And that's Brendan's game here. Obviously, flops very badly. But <laughs> Josie, final thoughts for Brendan before we move on. He did everything he can. He could honestly, honestly, honestly. Like, and the fact that when Hayden wins, he actually wants Brendan to stay. It literally shows that Brendan was doing everything he could, but like he wasn't a brigade member, and like, you know, he was already on the block. It was between Brittany and Brendan. And what's crazy to me, and this is why I think Hayden kind of flops in this. They should have convinced them to vote to evict Brittany. Brittany was close with Reagan. Brittany was close with um, with Lane. And this becomes kind of an issue later on. But they should have, I think, I think Hayden, this is a move that doesn't benefit Hayden at all to get rid of Brandon when Brandon is clearly working for Enzo and Hayden at that point in time. Like that was their ally and they didn't even want him to go. If like honestly, what they should have done that they should have put Brittany and Reagan up on the block immediately. It just made sense. They're kind of a duo. And didn't really owe anything to Brittany. Like, I, it, it wasn't, I think Brendan did everything he could. He was always apologetic for Rachel. He always tried to encourage Rachel to be better. Like, he really did the best he could. They kind of, they put him on the outs very quickly in the beginning. Like, he had no shot. And he, the fact that he made it up until week seven, double eviction, you got to give credit where credit is due. And Brendan did the damn thing. Hats off. Well, yeah, I was just going to say that, that he was the target in the first week and he made it, you know, to where he did. So that's impressive. So then I'll add that I miss Big Brother when they go back to their contestants' hometowns and they talk to like mm. the family or friends. <laughs> There's like one specific spot where they're talking to Brendan's ex fiance and her, her mom. And the whole thing is just like a segment shitting on Brendan. And I just totally did not remember that at all. And I was like, when, when did this happen? That's a fever dream. Like, what? And it's just like, it's just her being like, he's very controlling. Like, I'm glad my daughter mm-hmm. didn't end up with him. He's not great. Like, I hope yeah. Rachel learns. That is messy. Luckily, like, they've been <laughs> happily married for so long and have children and everything worked out for them but it was just such a strange thing to see knowing how everything works out that, like this mm-hmm. random woman who we have no idea who this is is brendan's ex-fiance's mother and is talking shit about him it's just so, yeah just had to add that before we eulogize brendan i'm not, I'm not <laughs> gonna forget uh christine and bb16's husband and mom ridiculing her on the show saying i don't know why she's flirting with cody like that is just disgusting you know i'm I think I think it's the pandemic, but they need to bring back the the family visits because they need to bring guys. back the hometowns. Yes. They're so good. 
Yes. Um, okay. So I, I you know, I'm gonna be honest, and you know, we're gonna speed through the last of it because the moment Brendan leaves, it's officially three versus two. The rest of the season's a steamroll. Like there, there's no chance that a brigade member doesn't win here. Um, we're gonna see Lane win his HOH. Uh obviously everyone's like, all right, we're gonna take out Reagan next. So they pick Reagan. Um, but obviously. He needs to put someone up on the block with Reagan. So, you know, Lane asked everybody because Lane actually didn't want to win HOH. He tried to throw it at Enzo mm-hmm. at comps. Um, and, uh, you know, he process of elimination because he's not going to put up Brittany. He loves Brittany, um, which this is, in my opinion, the start of the downfall for Lane as a player. But we'll get to him in a second. Um, but he puts up Enzo. Enzo wins Vito. He puts up Hayden because he was afraid that Hayden and Enzo might backdoor Brittany if she were to stay. Um, which so, they were. Which they were. So uh, they do take out Reagan here. And Reagan is a good player. Um, before I get to him, Lane. I feel like this was a mistake. I, I mean... As you said a couple of votes ago, don't win this HOH. And, you know, he tried to throw it at Enzo, but Enzo just sucks, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but, like, this is not the HOH he needed because we, we kind of saw this with the cookout, right? It's like, don't keep, don't wait until, like, you're the last, like, get your duo out early, right? Like, like you, there's no need to keep them towards the end because they're going to have, like, a vendetta against you almost, right, if, if they're gone. Um, I felt like Lane waited way too long to take Brittany on because at the end of the day, if the objective is for the brigade members to be the last people in the house, what's the point of keeping her until the very end, you know? But, I mean, maybe that's kind of wrong because by luck, if she wins a competition, she takes those two out instead of him. So maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, But, I mean, we're talking about Reagan right now. Reagan... Uh, very smart player, uh, figured out the brigade very early on. Um, you know, he, uh, was trying to flip the house a little bit. And I think he would have been successful had it not been for Matt's horrible moves the week before, um, won his competitions when he needed to. I think Reagan was an okay player. I think he was pretty fun as a character. Um, and I liked his fights with Rachel. I think, I don't know. I think Reagan is forgotten a lot, but I think Reagan was a, like, uh, What's what's the good word the the saying for it? He was just like, I don't know. He was just like the pest at the ear that just wouldn't go away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but uh, Josie, how do you feel about Reagan's game? I think Reagan actually has a really good solid game. He kind of does this thing where he's kind of like the like integral person. Like he's the person with honor. He's the sensitive one, and it's very clear. So when he does argue with Rachel. It's like, that's like the break. And it's kind of like, he's speaking for the house. He's like, you need to become a, like, he's not dra- like, he starts being a little nasty. He starts getting a little nasty. But in the beginning, he's like, Rachel, you actually need to like, be a better person. Like you fight with everyone in the house. Like you think you're not the problem. Like be serious. He kind of gagged her. Then he said some nasty things, which were slightly wanted. I will say, Rachel, <laughs> I'm swinging. She was like, I'm going to make your, the rest of your time miserable. I'm going to be so annoying. I got nothing to lose. I'm already out, though. You know what I mean? So, obviously, <laughs> Reagan had his things to say. But he was really, socially, he had such a good game. Like, socially, he was a really good position. And it's kind of mad, who was, like, the consequence of his gameplay. I think if the brigade didn't exist, Reagan goes on to win the game, in my opinion. Because, like, the brigade is the only reason why I think Hayden wins. I think the brigade is the only reason why. Um, I think no. I think I, honestly, I think the only reason Hayden wins is because he's in like brigade. I think Enzo and Lane are really good socially that they could have navigated it. But the way he was moving with Krista, I don't know. If the brigade doesn't exist. Does he make it that far? I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, I think Reagan had a really good game, and I think he could have easily won. And we saw that he was able to like navigate and he, he could have navigated any twist pretty easily he was a saboteur at one point so like credit where credit is due okay how about you tito yeah i think that's a hot take that reagan would have won the whole thing without the brigade yes 100 percent. he's a good right. player like let's be serious it. he won the competitions when he needed to let's be real <laughs> I do now think that is a hot take but yeah <laughs> no 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 no, no, let's let's speak real. Let's speak real. Reagan <laughs> won when he needed to win. Reagan, and that's Except the difference between a lot fight. of these girlies. 
So who's ringing well, saying next to y'all? Who's well, ringing saying next to y'all? That was unnecessary. <laughs> You said he won when he needed to win. Where was the final five veto at? I'm, I'm just like, act like he wasn't up on the box seat. So, so who does well. who does Reagan beat if he sits in the end? Without the brigade? Yeah, I think he takes. I'm I'm not gonna lie. The way Ooh, I Kathy? think he's not not oh. Kathy. Matt. To be honest, I think Matt was a mm. shitty player. Let's be fucking for real. His yeah. management, the fact, the wife fly. Oh, we didn't talk about the jury segments. But when the girlies found out about the <laughs> lie, they wouldn't have known that who then. Had cancer? Who survived cancer? Oh, they wouldn't have known. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they wouldn't have known yeah. until after he oh. gave his speech and they voted for him to win. Yeah, yeah. Thing, I think Matt is arrogant enough to say it before. I genuinely do. No way. I genuinely the He's arrogance that was on bad, display. Dumb. The double power of Vito. No, the <laughs> dumbness erasure is why I'm having. I am standing firm in my rant when I say this man is over hyped for some of the things he did. Dumb, 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 dumb moves. I think Reagan was a good. But who did he piss off in the jury so that he wouldn't get votes? Rachel. Be serious. Rachel Brendan. <laughs> Rachel is one singular person. Rachel look, is look. One so realistically, person. realistically, in this moment. He would have to either beat Brittany. I don't think he beats Brittany. I don't think he I beats do. Hayden. I don't, no way. I don't, Brittany was he love. doesn't. He doesn't beat Brittany. He doesn't beat Hayden. Okay. I'm I he don't think Brittany. he beats Lane. I don't think he beats Enzo. Okay, okay. okay. first of all, you lost I, me with I, I don't thing. think he. No, 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 no. <laughs> I said in the context, let's keep in mind, I said in the context that the brigade doesn't exist. If the brigade doesn't exist, you think all these people are still in the final? If the brigade still, Rick would have been there with or without the brigade. We clearly thought he was there with the brigade. If there was no brigade, he would have still so, been look, there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you why. Opinion. I'm gonna show you why. Ready? Sure if Reagan sits next to Hayden, it takes four votes to win, right? But you guys, Matt, are, you see, Enzo, you guys are Lane, that's three. Now. You just need one more. Brittany votes for Lane. Now. I'm just being honest. If you're going by the votes. The brigade, if they're you're sitting next to any non brigade, the context now. I'm, no, I'm you're honest. changing it. You're no, changing I said it. You're the brigade, no look, brigade. look, look, if, yeah, if yes, Reagan that sits, was my point. I'm gonna that be honest. Point look, from the start. If Reagan sits next to another brigade member, there's three guarantee for that brigade member sitting there. It takes one more that's non brigade to vote that person away. Absolutely, you are correct. You are correct. That's gonna so happen. Said, Brittany, I feel like. Has all the brigade members' votes personally because she was correct. the vet. and then so there's no one else left in the season at this point unless he you figures out how to get but Brendan. Think, no, yeah. let's be serious. You guys, you are completely correct. But my context, I said, if the brigade you hear that? We're correct. Exist, <laughs> if the brigade doesn't exist, I don't think Hayden is making it to top six. Let's be fucking for real. Without the brigade, Hayden would not be there. What did Hayden do in this game? You can say well, the same thing for the cookout. I'm gonna start slandering Hayden. You can say the I'm same thing for the cookout. Oh, don't be, don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> no, anyway, does not, anyway. Derek does. Derek F does not make to the final two without the cookout. Correct. I agree. Yeah, Everyone yeah. else, though, Hannah, Tiffany. Tiffany was in the best position in the house. Don't get me started. On the it's shaky. I'm, I agree. I'm just saying but it's shaky. Out, here's, here's why I think. Ron, listen, listen. Overhyped. This is a conversation for another podcast. We, we, we're, we're here. My our, concluding it's... notes, I'll talk about why I think the brigade is overhyped. Okay? For now, we'll, we'll put a pin on it. We'll put a pin in it. You can go ahead. Well, we'll, 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 we'll say that for ahead. the end. I'm, I, we got to move on. Um, So, <laughs> just speeding through. There's really only two. I'm going to just be honest. <laughs> Because we can just sum up the rest of the season here right now. Um, we can give a segment to Brittany and then the rest of the brigade. You got Brittany is obviously gone the next week because she does not win HOH. Hayden wins it. Uh, and, you know, it's straightforward at that point. They sit her down and they're like, look, there's an alliance that we may call the brigade. It's so awkward. They're just <sighs> laughing about it. <laughs> yeah, we made this thing. It's called the brigade. 
Brittany just starts crying. She's like, yo, y'all played me. Lane is so awkward with confrontation. We kind of see this um, with some of his questions during the jury questioning. But um, Brittany is eliminated here. She's the honorary fifth member of the brigade. Um, fast forward, uh, you know, it's straightforward. We see the final three. Um, Enzo is the odd man now. Lane and Hayden sit next to each other. Lane gets completely destroyed in the questioning, and Hayden is our winner by one vote. Uh, the people who voted Lane was Lane, was Brittany, uh, Brendan, and Rachel. Everyone else voted Hayden. Um, so real quick, we can talk about Brittany, and then we can talk about the brigade, and then we can do final questions because we're at hour 23 in this. So how do we feel about Brittany, the big brother legend, uh, America's favorite player of the season? Brittany's great. There, there's so much you could say about her. Um, I think that her coming back in season 14 is notable. That She was a, a star. Uh, I think that she is probably one of the reasons that Reagan, like you said, isn't get like his due um, because of the Brenchel of it all, the brigade of it all. And then Brittany, like, I feel like those three kind of take the whole season into them. So if Reagan gets kind of left out. Um, but yeah, so I think her coming back in BB 14 and then we see her again in the amazing race later on, which I think is like, that was really exciting for me to see because she's someone who I really connected with. She was really funny. I think like a little problematic here and there saying certain things, but like overall, like just good fun in the DR and someone that would have honestly would have been great if she won. That would have been great to see. How about you, Josie? Yeah, Brittany is Brittany is Brittany, period. Like she like I watched the per diem video. Um shout out to Per Diem who came to fight you to you, Isaiah. But I was watching it about like underrated people, I forget what it was, the title, but they were talking about DRs. And when I think of DRs, I think of Brittany. And one thing he mentioned about season 12, I'll talk about later, but um, Brittany is like, she's TV gold. Like she was so entertaining. She was so fun to watch. Like she was the moment. Like the fact that she wore Rachel's extensions and made fun of her to her face, like you can't repeat that. There are things that you just can't, there are iconic things that you cannot repeat, cannot be done again. And that is one of them. And that is all because of Brittany. Like she was that girl. And to be honest, all I had remembered prior to the season was Brittany was good in the arts and that she was spending. I didn't realize that she had so many comps. She won three POVs, one HOH. Like that's crazy. I think that's four comps in total. It might be tied for the most wins. I think maybe Hayden. No, I even think I think Hayden won how many HOHs. If you divide the final HOHs in two parts, I think then, you put Brendan in the conversation too. Yes, but like, she, like the fact that she's up there, bro. You were entertaining. You were good at the comps, and you made it to final four, which means some uh, not final, yeah, final four, which means somehow, some way, you also have the strategy down. But she what had the three? She was mm -hmm. a triple threat. Like, and I think we forget that. And that's what gagged me because I didn't remember she was winning comps like that too. Like, come on now. She was, she was, she was a good choice. Like that was a great casting choice and she did the damn thing. Mm -hmm. And she was so young, right? Like she was exactly super young, recently engaged, just like, I don't know. And then when she comes back two seasons later, she's like poised to win that season until she's not. But like, she's <laughs> kind of all around like great. She's a really good player and I don't think we talk about her enough in that sense like overall player not just like entertainment you know when people say entertaining p players they'll think like tiffany davon whatever like whoever else you want to name but we don't talk about overall player and she doesn't get cre like credit enough she is the easily best confessional person in big brother history in my opinion mm -hmm. I, I think she's queen queen of drs there's no no contest um Okay, and then lastly, you know, we can talk to them as a collective since they operate as a collective. Enzo, Lane, and Hayden are eventual winners. We actually see Enzo uh, come back for a few shows. He came back for All Stars. He played in the Challenge USA. Um, Hayden, we actually saw him play Survivor. Survivor. Um, <laughs> It did pretty well, and then we got Lane, who was he's just breathing, he's just there. Uh, but uh, you know, these the three, um, kind of ran the season, and you know, Matt was there, but not really. Uh, but how do we feel about the brigade? Are you know, Josie thinks they're overrated, but Tito, how do you feel about the brigade? Are the, are the brigade an overrated alliance? 
I think there is there's definitely something to them being like the first alliance to successfully get to the end. Um, so there's like a foundational point there in terms of like that being important and notable. Um, in terms of like their their own ability to accomplish the things, I think that could be more questioned. Um, and the fact that they like kind of argue within themselves, even I feel like Lane is like kind of an all time bad final two performance. I don't know how you ended up ranking him in the last, the, the runners up ratings. I'll, I'll check it. We're that was all time. <laughs> terrible and honestly hayden's performance was not great good either. either it was no. kind of just like we have to choose the, whichever one is better of these terrible two um they're not and then to your point too josie like they're not entertaining like i didn't wasn't entertained necessarily by them as like tv characters um and so i i can go back and forth with and his antics within this season and then all stars too but like overall like as a collective, I don't care for the alliance. I care about what that alliance did for future alliance creations. Like, I don't think that we have some of the alliances in the future without this sort of foundation that they kind of implemented, um, whether intentional or not. Um, but yeah, let me know if you found out what what where do where you ranked Lane because I yeah. can't get over how bad that was. Um, we put Lane. Let's see, Lane was ranked in D tier, so. Yeah, 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 should be higher. Um, yeah, higher, but D tier. I will defend Lane. Yeah, mm, it, no, you need to go the... back and rewatch that and then come back and then know that. He's <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> What do you want me to start with? Because I, I need to talk about one, not the I can't do both at the same go time. Go for it, go for it. Let me talk about why I think the brigade is overrated quickly in that period of time. You know, I don't know what year that is. I'm going to say like 2011. I could be wrong. That sounds right. That's yes. Brilliant. The Brigade being a big alliance of, of four people making it that far. Sure. Great. Top alliance. Sure. But we are in 2023. There are several international franchises of this show. And you mean to tell me that when people think of some of the best alliances Brigade is top five. Be fucking for real. Be yes. fucking for real. No, no, yes. no, 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 no. And let yes. me tell you why. Let me tell you why. You guys, the, the thing is, the Brigade loves to erase Matt's existence. Matt's existence within the Brigade also just plummets it down. I'm being serious. Like, how is it? Like, how is it? Hayden gets distracted by Kristen. Chaos. These people are turning, these people within the Alliance are trying to play some of their downfalls. Like Hannah, like they are actively trying to get Kristen out to get like focus on Hayden. And if they don't get Kristen out, let's say Kristen gets veto. You don't think they would have turned on Hayden? Like, what did this alliance do? Seriously. They I don't think the there's numbers. a single big brother US alliance that's dominated that didn't have a moment where they were about to turn on each other. They all all when level you six alliance, are you guys out, saying three? Wait, wait, wait. When you guys are saying alliance, are you saying no, no, no. When you're saying alliance, how many people are you talking about? Because alliance more than, more than two. two people. More than two. More than two. Okay, then now we're talking about two different things. Because an alliance is an alliance. It's someone you have loyalty to to the end. Yeah. And there are some duos out there who run circles around. There, there's dynamic the duos and then there's 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 alliance. Like, I feel like alliance needs But they're still the same. If like they have an alliance with you, Isaiah, and we're two people. It's yeah, two yeah, but, but like... Now when, we're picking and choosing when, when we want to say No, but I've, oh, I've always... Listen, I've always said... There's two conversations. There's the duos like a chill town, renegades, uh, coast to coast lines. There's difference, and then there's the multi person alliance, which is like the brigade, the cookout. Hey, the if we're talking about multi group alliance, then sure they're up there because there's not that yeah. many to begin with that are successful. Okay, there's a bare Absolutely. minimum at that. But Let's there's 24 curious. seasons to work off of with this. There That's the, a lie. Here's Sounds the thing. like a little because, backtrack if I ever heard. No, one. no, 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 no. They are the bare minimum. The brigade is the bare minimum. Like you guys voted together. And what what did they do? What did they do except vote? Isn't for that what together? every alliance does? You want to compare the <laughs> cookout to the brigade? The cookout they... came up with a strategy that freaking is changed the game. They're that the best alliance the of all time. I agree. 
But the brigade is no, number two. No but the brigade is a bare minimum. And now well, brigade's number two. Like, it's a bunch of, it's four white All right, men name, name another multi personal lines that's not the cookout that's better than the brigade. Level six? Absolutely not. No. The committee? Absolutely <laughs> not. I think about it's all the international seasons of Big Brother. I'm, we're talking about Big Brother this Canada. is the Big Brother yeah. US review. Did series. I not start this argument by saying there are several franchises up until this? Give point. me another one. Who? The Pretty Boys? Oh. I hate the pretty boys, but let's be fucking for real. That's it. At like, I don't think of another strategy. one. Anthony, the pretty Anthony, boys were literally, Anthony, like, created Anthony, with the Anthony. Brigade Foundation. Like, they Thank said you. that themselves. Thank they you. said they we stole wanted the to do the Brigade. Brigade. No, 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 no. Here's the issue. You are talking about men who got together and made an alliance. That is not revolutionary. I'm sorry. That's not what we're I'm saying. Sorry. We're saying that I'm it was important sorry. and it's <laughs> instrumental in a lot They set the foundation. No, 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 no. Foundation of men getting along together, it's been like that for years. What are you, what are you talking about foundation? No, for like a lot of revolutionary. No, no, no. And this is what I mean by they're overrated. You're saying they made the foundation of men getting along? <laughs> this has been okay, society. Nobody for said years. that but you. You said no, 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 no. that. You said that. The pretty boys. No, they did. You said no, that. Did. Thing. No, I said no, they're no, pretty no, boys. No. I didn't say anything <laughs> else. I said the pretty boys. You guys said that. And, you know, and Tito I'm, I'm looking said at you. the, you know, the looking pretty at you. boys. If you're listening, go ahead and rewind 10 seconds. I never said you that. Said, you Tito said, said, said the pretty boys used the brigade strategy, and then you started going on he, about. They, no, 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 no. He said that the, the brigade made the foundation, that they used the foundation that the brigade made. The yeah. foundation of what, though? Of All guys' working, working together? It that's works. The foundation. I'm but it works. It work. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I said it's the bare minimum, and that's why I think they're overhyped. Because there's but they nothing, were the first to do it. But uh, yeah, I guess at the time it wasn't the bare minimum. That's what without the brigade. No, the, also, I said that. No... Did I not say that? I said for 2011, for the time. Yes, it was the moment. It was a big group. But let's be fun here for real. There's nothing revolutionary about the brigade except for the fact that there are four white men who got along and then caught one of them. But they also oh, they, they made it to the end. now. You're, I feel like you're selling them short because I do think that their strategy of all ha- having a duo in this house also really credited to them controlling the season. <laughs> that was not Lane had Brittany. What? <laughs> what? Lane had Brittany. Hayden no. had Christine. Hayden want to get into Christine's pants. That was not Thank strategy. You. That if was intentional. That Hayden... They said it. It was intentional. You're lying. Intentional. You're lying. You're telling me that Hayden being close to Kristen was strategy? Yeah. No. Yeah, it just worked out yes, that way. 100%. If, 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 <laughs> it no, 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 just worked out. You and I are saying two different things, Keto. No. I'm saying, saying no. I'm crazy. saying <laughs> they, were, they, they, they were flirty, and then when they had this strategy, they're like, all right, well, let's get them closer. But then when they started getting a little too flirty, they were like, Hayden, you need to slow your roll. I'm Which not is- Call what, that's player. important too, I think, when we yeah. talk about this, is how much um like agency the brigade had. There, they had no one going against them. Anything that they that happened, Wait, they the decided, brigade had like, agen- agency, or did Enzo have agency? Let's be for real. What? I'm absolutely no, 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 no. <laughs> Enzo every single time in the DR was like, oh, like these people are too close together. Blah, blah, blah. He did it with Hayden, and he was talking to Lane. Then when Lane was close to Brittany, Enzo was talking to Hayden. Um, um, did I lie? Did I lie? Did I not just pick? Did I just? Did I not I, just I'm gonna be I honest with you. I'm just lost I, in what we're even talking no, about. No, 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 no. Anyways, my point I'm just is, lost is that we're talking about my this point way. is my point is is that I personally think that I don't think if if they had let's be real if they had talked about it like the cookout did, we're intentionally gonna stay with one person. We're gonna put him together. And we're gonna go on the block. Then I would have been like, okay, shit, that's new strategy. That's innovative. That's crazy. That's cool. I'm not saying that br- the brigade by any means is a terrible alliance. I don't think so. I said they're overrated in the sense that I think they get way too much credit than they deserve, but that doesn't mean that they don't deserve credit. I don't th- this, I'm not saying that they don't deserve credit. Done, I just think there, they, they're four. They're just four white men who just got along. I'm just and saying they're, they're, they there's not a lot of big alliances to succeed the way and control a season the well, way that they did. How is a big alliance but, in, a, in uh, a game like Big Brother? Before this season, unheard of. The closest thing you can find is the friendship and they flopped. So it's just like, it's not an, a, a regular thing and it just happens it just happened to be right after this season that we see a bunch of other seasons of big alliances running seasons after this. I'm just saying this is the first time it's happened. 
and then we don't see it. They they kind of affected the landscape. Right after this season, what do we see? The Quack Pack. Um, well, sorry, after 13, we see what? So first of all, we see all vets alliance. Then we see the Quack Pack. And then the season after that, we see what? Uh, what, what was the 15? The Exterminators. 16, we see the Detonators. 17, we see Vanessa's uh, Scamper Squad. Like the uh, Freaks and Geeks or whatever. Well, yeah. Scamper Squad too, but like, Every other season after this, everyone's trying to make a big freaking alliance. Even Enzo in All Stars, everyone's like, "We're waiting for Enzo to make the big alliance so we can, you know, run the rest of the season." Like, there was not a thing. This was not a concept for uh, of let's get a corner of this house to band together, vote together until jury phase, and then everyone do every do whatever they want. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, sure. I'm not saying sure. they're perfect. They are messy as hell, and their strategy is horrible at times but they are the first people to really do this and it has to your statement has affected international big brother as well i, I think that's all we're saying all, all my i i just want to answer this one point you said they're the like one of the only alliances to get far to the game not only first i know one of there one of go. the only whatever like the first no. whatever but my point is is like here's why i don't really care about that because at the end of the day big brother is an individual game like yeah you can get a group to win but it's automatically going to benefit one of you and so i don't think big brother is a game that's meant for big alliances like to like for it's not meant for big alliances to really like that's not the point of it it's individual like you you should be coming into the game i want to win and the brigade like some people do do that but it's like almost to the point where it's like they're just sacrificing to get each other to the final four and there's no sense of urgency and like that's why i think i'm so annoyed by matt's game because at the end of the day you wanted to sacrifice yourself for the brigade and put reagan offer reagan up as an option when at the end of the day these people don't care about you you want to die so hard for this group of people that it's an individual game so yeah i get it like you're one of the first to do it whatever but like what does that get you like enzo got third he didn't get well... a check or nothing well, what I will so, say like, is that this strategy seems to produce the same type of winner every time it's happened, which is why the sa- the season that just happened kind of spoke out against that. Because what? This season we get what? The very in the middle all around player in Hayden. Um, we're going to see the same thing happen with uh, level six. Uh, Casey, the same all around type of player. We're going to see with the committee the same all-around type of player in Cody, and we see with X, the same all-around type of player. We're seeing this strategy being copied and pasted almost every single time, and we get the same winner. So Hayden they did start. I'm sorry. And let's not forget the start of Big Brother Hayden is the least the deserving winner. Yes. In the start, when, before it's things it's happened, Turner, yeah. Like, that was like a whole other, like, that could have been a thing. And I could have saw there. Joseph as well, at, or, or mm-hmm. Kyle at one point yeah. had also, certain things not happen. To your so. point, Joseph, I will say, what you're saying about how this is an individual game and we need to, like, get with it mm-hmm. and play for yourself, I think it's like, push back on that a little bit. That's exactly what we praised the cookout for is for being like united and like that's a different that was a different school. cause though that was a different cause. a hundred percent but in terms of like playing the game individually like there are causes that you want to play for and you should play for and we praise them for and so i think like that comes into play too not necessarily with the brigade right obviously but like it's a thing and it exists in like dynamic relationships i think i think the reason why to me the bird like I, I'm not going to like sit here and act like the Brigade didn't have strategy or anything of the sort at all. I just, again, I stay firm. You guys are right. Do, do they have impact? For sure. But I still think they're overrated, in my opinion. There are people who've done That's crazier fair. things. And I, when I was saying alliance, I was considering everyone who said, hey, we're in an alliance together. So that means duos. But again, mm-hmm. different definitions for people. Just like some people think that a back door is when you put someone up because someone put themselves, took the veto and took themselves off the block, like that's not a back door, but okay, so let's call it a back door in your DR. Like people have different definitions, different perspectives. And that's why I like to talk about it because we're obviously not gonna have the same perspectives on things. But overall, I still think, like I'm not saying that the brigade sucks, like those words did not come out of my mouth. But my point mm-hmm. is, is like, I do think they're overrated. And I think they get a lot of praise for some terrible gameplay. Like there are a lot of mistakes and mishaps from a lot of these people and that's why i also think that hayden is the least deserving like i will not praise enzo but rewatching this season i'm like i see why they brought him back they didn't bring 
They didn't bring back Matt. They didn't bring back Hayden. They didn't bring back Link. They brought back Enzo. Maybe they asked him to come and they said no. But like, Enzo, honestly, to me, orchestrates a lot of it. And maybe because of the DR. I didn't watch Life Feed, so I don't know. I'm just speaking on what was produced in front of me that I streamed on Paramount+. Plus. Okay, mm -hmm. so from what I saw was that Enzo kind of is that middle person. Like, he is the one who had, and that's why they cut him, because they thought he was going to win. Was he going to win? I don't know. It's like a jury question was really confusing to me. But um, I really do think that Enzo deserves it. And I think, I think Hayden had to piggyback off the, like the, the brigade's back after Kristen left. That's why I think he's the least deserving. Because at least Enzo, you know, he had, like, he wasn't winning shit, but that social game was fire, bro. Like, you can't sleep. Like, come on now. Like, I can tell, like, even in the small segments, I can tell that Enzo has really good social relationships with people. And I think Elaine, going into it, if Brittany wins, if Brittany wins, what? At that end stage, Elaine is the best, in the best position. Hayden is always the one who's low-key vulnerable like with Enzo as well but it just takes Britney to win one more time which is not out of the ordinary because as I mentioned she won four of the competitions before that I think Elaine he had a shitty performance they both had a shitty performance in their final two speeches but I think Elaine had a lot more to discuss he had a lot more to discuss that he could have and he could have won he it was four to three had he had better performance I think he is a more deserving winner in this season because I really do not see what Hayden did. What did he do? Please enlighten me. I'm I'm here. I'm receptive. Open I just think Hayden heart. just has the personality um, in the type of energy that people just like being around. I'm just being honest. Um, we so see that privilege. with Drew. <laughs> uh, it, I was just thank you. That. Thank when you. You're a charismatic yeah, white dude. Like, you get a lot. A lot yeah, comes privilege, yeah. but that to me is yeah. not a good winner. I'm no, I will say what I think, because I, I, I think I agree with you generally about Hayden, Big Brother 12, about, like, he won some comps, like, he's, you know, charismatic, sure, but I think I'm bringing in Survivor into this. He was a really good Survivor player. Like, he, like, did really well in my eyes, and I feel like I'm attributing some of that to his Big Brother play, mm -hmm. which may or may not be true. Two different shows. Um, <laughs> no, I agree, I agree, but that's why I'm, I'm, my view is skewed, and I'm, you know, forthcoming with that. Um, he should play Survivor again. I think he'd be really good. Um, but yeah, that's where I get the Hayden. Like, I get him as a winner. Um, also, I think that Lane's performance was... They were both bad, but Lane's was just horrible. terrible. <laughs> that, like, terrible. Like, yeah, for sure. You had to vote for, for sure. one. Like, let's give it to Hayden. Yeah. That's where I think that came from. I think, I think if they both... And that's what I mean. Like, if they both were eloquent enough to speak on their games, people would have been like, oh, shit, Lane. Yeah. Oh, shit, Lane. <sighs> But what are you gonna do? But look, I have a lot of ending questions, but we just kind of answered all of them. So uh, <laughs> look, that that is the podcast. Uh, the, the last question I I actually do want to ask um, that I've been asking for every one of these. So if we had to rank Big Brother twelve um, from top tier, middle tier, or low tier, where would we put it? What are your What are your contributing factors, though? Like, what are we taking into consideration? Anything, anything you want. It's your personal preference. I've been going off of entertainment strategy. Uh, if I'm rewatchability, longevity, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. Tito, I'm gonna let you go first. Okay, yeah, I, I think I do have a response. I think for me, it might be okay. Also, caveats: there are a few Big Brother seasons that I have not seen that. Mm -hmm. could, could shift my viewing of this particular season. But um, I think it's top tier. I think it has good characters. I think the Rachel Riley of it all really elevates it for me. I think that she's really like a force in terms of like entertainment viewing. Um, I think like, we don't have to get into it again, but the Brigade as an alliance, <laughs> like, you know, kind of creating that foundation and creating that structure of what an alliance could look like is, is important. Um, and also just my nostalgia and entry point of it. It's one of the first seasons that I saw. It like really got me hooked into Big Brother. So I, I like think back to it fondly. Um, it has like a, you know, relatively unproblematic like season as a whole. There's nothing too poignant that's like, that was really terrible. I don't like that of that season. Um, so I think that, yeah, overall, I'd probably rank it top tier. I think um, at, at this time too of CBS casting, I can't get over like it being an all white cast. Like that is 
really missing the mark for me. Um, but overall, generally, I think it's a pretty, pretty top tier season. How about you, Josie? Mm. I'm, I'm going to, I'm putting some math into my decision in the sense that I'm like, okay, there's 24 seasons, not counting BBOTT or the, the celebrity version. Celebrities, yeah. So if we're dividing 24 by three, it's eight. So it's like eight would be top tier, eight, would, eight seasons would be in the middle tier, and then eight seasons would be bottom tier. Nice. And right now I can think of already like six seasons that are in the top for me, top tier. And so automatically for me, thinking about maybe seasons I haven't thought of, I'm like, this has to be middle tier. I think overall there are such good iconic people from the season. I mean, Rachel... Brittany, be serious. Like these are some staples. <laughs> Big Brother out. Legends. You got the Brigade, Brittany, Rachel. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. The Brigade, Brittany, and Brunchel. Brunchel. I said Rachel. Brunchel. Brunchel. I mean, Brunchel. I'm both of them, Even the flop that was the saboteur twist. Like that are staples in the Big Brother house. Like I feel Don't like forget about Kristen. Out. <laughs> Rest in, like if you if you made like a meme or like just like moments in the house that like moments in Big Brother history that you're like what like this is so good this is so funny or whatever this season definitely has some elements to it for sure would I want to now go on Paramount Plus and then pick season twelve to rewatch out of all the seasons no like to me it gets kind of boring at some point. I think Rachel being in the house is what makes it fun to rewatch because you get that back and forth switch of power. And when she leaves, everyone's kind of at the mercy of the brigade. And I don't like the brigade that much. So obviously for me, it's like, mm, I don't really care about the season role. And it's just so unfortunate to see Brittany cry every time. Like it's actually like it breaks my heart because imagine in that moment figuring out that you just spent X amount of days in the house only to be steamrolled by an alliance that pretty much allowed you to be here. That's fucking yeah. wild. That's wild. That like that breaks my heart. I don't know. I just don't think it's it's I, I think it reminds me of why like the game with elements of like people being being real, but I don't know. I just don't I just don't think it's like the best season. Like if I if I had to put season twelve somewhere, it'd probably be in the middle. Yeah, no, that's fair. Like, I would uh like if it were up to me, I would put it. Tw- like obviously, I don't have the direct uh, list in my mind, but it would be either like the bottom of top tier, or it would yeah. be like the top of mid tier. Like this is yeah. the definition of uh, a middle tier season. It's funny because we have twenty four seasons, and now we have t- this is season twelve. Like this right. is like th- as mid as possible. It, it gives me moments. Uh, mm-hmm. It gives me Big Brother Legends. Uh, mm-hmm. It gives me a lot of quotable things, but like the strategy is so stagnant um, from the first mm-hmm. week, and um, I'm just bored. You know, so I can't. When I know who's going to win, I tend not to watch, but I like to look mm. at the YouTube clips every now and then to see like, oh, Rachel's goodbye messages or Britney's DR segments or stuff like that, you know, so there you go. But all right. So that is our review. This is a pretty long, but not our longest. So that's, you know, that's okay. This is a great podcast. So thank you guys for joining me. Um, and if you enjoy what you like, please check out our audio platforms in our social media and follow all of our stuff subscribe to the youtube channel and if you like what you hear go on our apple podcast and our spotify or whatever else you listen to and leave a five-star review but if it's for do not rank it only wait until you hear something that's five star and then you rank it but um thank you guys for coming on for the season review this was pretty fun i'm um, going to just start doing close out so tito thank you so much for coming on the show um where can people find you thanks for having me it was a blast i'm glad to have chatted with you all and had very vibrant discussions um, if you want to discuss more about how the brigade is great, Josie, let me know. Uh, you can follow me <laughs> on Twitter at, at Bacicis or Letterbox. I just started a Letterbox account because I've been watching lots of movies. So find me on there at Bacicis. <laughs> What's up? Okay. Got to bring on the, uh, the movie podcast at some point. That's going to be Let's a fun one. Um, Josie, as, as usual, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure we're going to be seeing you for Big Brother Canada stuff that comes up soon. But where can people find you? Yes. Um, I am. Well, we're waiting for the circle season to finish, but me and Carrie covered the circle. We did it last season. We also had Alex on last season, Kang. 
um, and his beautiful girlfriend. So that was fun. So we are hoping to bring a special guest again this time for our season recap. So that'll be fun. So keep an, uh, an eye out for that. But other than that, my username is the same on every single platform except for TikTok. So y'all can follow me at Josian XNM, J O S I A N E X N M. Um, and you can tweet at me and tell me why you also agree with my points about the brigade because it was so true. It was so real of me. I kind of mothered. Um, <laughs> yes, but I will be on for Big Brother Canada. You know, that's my bread and butter or whatever. Maybe for season 11 recap. I don't know if we're still doing that, but yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. We will be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh oh b- before I, I close out uh shout out to y'all I, i've been getting a lot of comments on these so shout out to the replay crew shout out to y'all um so drop your comments in the the video comment section afterwards but um you can find me like usual at eight ball bangers on everything um you can find me here like usual Every Monday or possibly Tuesday next week, I'm still figuring it out, but possibly Monday talking about Jordan Lloyd's Big Brother 11. Um, so that should be a fun one as well because that is just horrible strategically, but so many fights. So um, that'll be fun to talk about. But until next time, have a good one. Bye. Bye.